Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, this session we are going to be talking about the professional responsibilities of the engineer, which is basically the subject of our course. Now, one of the main differences between science and engineering is that science looks at, un at understanding the world. Engineering uses the, the sciences to make a difference and to apply it in a real context. Most engineers, we would all like to think that we can change the world and that we do it uh, as part of our jobs, which basically is a, a morally motivated discipline. Now, in the process of change, however, things can go wrong. Difficult decisions will have to be made. Sometimes we really have to, to think about who's going to be affected by what we do. And different people have different motivations, different challenges, as well as different and very varied moral frameworks, backgrounds, even um, backgrounds that come from different countries, for example, and how they interpret the values and code of conduct that you that will have. So it is essential for us as engineers to ensure that we are not only competent in our areas of work, but also that we are well equipped to deal with moral situations, a spot that a moral uh, dilemma is taking place and take ourselves through the analysis, um, looking for different possible solutions and applying our et et ethical frameworks to make a decision. Now, um, in this talk, as I said, we're going to be looking at responsibility as a, as a concept for engineers. And I think this is important because not only responsibility can be understood in different concepts for different people, um, for example, they can be attached to roles. As a parent, you'll be thinking about the responsibility you have with your children, as an employee, with your employers, the other way around, the employers to you, and so on. So what does it mean to be responsible? Being accountable for your actions and the effects of your actions means that you are responsible. And therefore, if you make a decision, you can be accountable for, for what you've decided to do. So responsibility has two aspects to it. It can be an active type of responsibility of, or a passive type of responsibility. Responsibility is passive if the person who is held responsible is accountable for an action or a decision taken. If you are held responsible for an action or a decision that you took in your engineering capacity and you are not able to give a satisfactory argument for, for your actions, then you are deemed blameworthy. Now, in order to be blameworthy, four criteria must apply. Let me go through the criteria. So the first one is wrongdoing. When you violated a norm or did something wrong, in this case, we look at ethical frameworks and we'll talk about ethical frameworks later on, but conscience, your conscience or a code of conduct will apply, uh, whether it's a professional code of conduct or whether it's um, uh, an organizational code of conduct. Causal contribution is the second criteria when your action causes something to happen which is very self-explanatory. But in this case, failure to act is often considered a causal contribution as well. So not making a decision, not acting on something will also be considered causal contribution. Foreseeability is the third criteria where the person held responsible must have been able to foresee the consequences of their actions. And the final criteria for blameworthiness is the freedom of action. So if you are held responsible um, for an action, you must have been free to, to take that decision, to make that decision. In other words, uh, you must not have been acted under coercion. Passive responsibility considers situations when something has gone wrong. So who was responsible, or in other words, accountable, as we said, are they to blame based on the criteria discussed. So we have discussed that 
side of responsibility when you've already done something, when you took an action, you made a decision? What, what happens when you are about to make a decision on, in, in the future? Something is going to, to happen. This is the active component of responsibility. Now, um, active responsibility is defined as ensuring that, that our work and future projects ensure that no harm will come to anyone. And in general, really looking at how can we apply our skills to doing something good. So active responsibility is not about blame in this case, but about preventing ne negative effects of our work while realizing the positive effects of it. Active responsibility can be understood by looking at the ideals of engineers. What makes us stick, really? What motivates us? What inspires us? Some ideals are personal ideals, like, for example, wanting to earn a lot of money. Uh, some of us do that. Um, wanting to be famous. Invent something new out of curiosity but they also can be inspired on wanting to improve the world by designing, say, for example, technical innovations that uh, you think will be applied for a specific cause. This is when ideas become professional ideas and can only be achieved by carrying out a profession. We'll talk about professions later on. Now, let's discuss three different types of ideas of the professional engineer. Now, for us, it's really exciting to develop new innovations and, and often we find ourselves wanting to, to come up with a new uh, piece of technology. The first one is technological enthusiasm. The idea of wanting to develop a new technology is, is really exciting. A nice example is Google Earth, which allows us to zoom in on, on the surface of the Earth it's a beautiful example of, of technological innovation, really. Um, when it came to, to happen, we were all very excited looking, zooming in to my friend's house and my mom in Mexico. Now, the problem with that, for uh, obvious reasons, is the moral implications of privacy or security even. Uh, there are considerations of what could happen if uh, this type of technology were used to say, for example, terrorism. As engineers, we also tend to strive to achieve an established goal. We re really are excited with trying to get to where we decided to go, uh, in other words, to be effective. But we also strive by efficiency, aiming to get to that point, the fastest, the quickest, the cheapest, is, is in our training. That's what we do. So these ideas are first sight can be hardly contestable. However, there are examples in history, say, for example, we, as, as engineers, we are familiar with time and motion studies, which show effectiveness and efficiency in practice. However, if you think about it, uh, although this has, uh, a very, has initially a very important uh, objective, which was to reduce the time and make uh, production lines more efficient, what it ended up happening was that people became merely slaves of their companies. They, 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 their human rights were compromised. So a third ideal of engineers is that of contributing or enhancing human welfare, which is something that we talked about. So for example, the Institute of Mechanical Engineers state that all members shall conduct their professional work and relationships with integrity and objectivity and with due regard for the welfare of the people, the organizations and the environment which they interact with. Now, from a moral point of view, uh, human welfare is, is hardly a, a, a difficult sell, is it? Uh, however, uh, in the case of technological enthusiasm and effectiveness and efficiency, the ideas cannot necessarily be moral. Uh, sometimes they, they are desirable and useful, uh, but very much depends on the use of, of the technology and its consequences. Now, on the other hand, human welfare does remind us that engineering is not a profession that is morally new, uh, neutral. 
we, we have to consider our, the consequences of our actions. And that as engineers, we're expected and responsible for more than creating technology, but also creating solutions for the benefit of others. So uh, can I ask you please, look at this chapter in your book, in the textbook, um, and, and refer to professional responsibilities of the engineer for, for more information.